So, YouTubers, uh, in my uh, Boswell video, I discussed with you about um, Webley and Scott shotguns. Now then, I bought this Webley and Scott shotgun when I left engineering. My son was only very young at the time, and I bought it for him as a... Yes, as an investment, that's quite selfish. I didn't, I didn't just buy it for him. I bought it for myself because I liked it. Um, but at the time, it seemed like something too good to be true. And I've had it checked out, and I've been down to Basque with it, and I'd um, uh, Bill Harriman have a look at it, and um, you know, got the thumbs up. This is a Webley and Scott seven hundred. Um, made about 1965-66 um, if you remember we talked about case hardening before where the um, metal is heated up and quenched in oil and the blues and dark browns and sort of chocolate colours that it puts on the steel well that's the case hardening the reason I bought this gun is um, I know the providence, the provenance of it and it's come from um, a pal of a pal who was a scrap metal dealer and he took a lot of guns in for bad debts which you know in the 60s you were allowed to do because there wasn't a stringent a stringent um, uh, licensing as there is now um, the reason that this shotgun appeal to me um, not only does it come with the original trade catalogue and the original export catalogue that's from 1967 um, and that trade catalogue goes up to 1968 but it also came with the original swing ticket from the factory which to me and to any prospective buyer would kind of be icing on cake as you can see that it came from the factory it's the model 700 12 gauge 28 inch barrels left chokes three quarters right chokes a quarter that's the serial number and can't get any better than that really for provenance for a gun uh, that's generally just be ragged off gun each shot and binned this is another 12 bore it's a game gun um, but this is unfired that's what what kind of makes it and what kind of you know puts sort of tin lid on it um i don't know if you've ever seen a shotgun that's been in bits this has got nice lump barrels this is an ejector which has got the springs in which would eject the, the cartridges as we discussed before it's got a full set of proof marks um the choking is to uh, the chambering is two and three quarters which means it's 70 76 is it two and three quarters 76 millimeters from that barrel face to the you know to the end of the choke which means you can use two inch cartridges and two and a half inch cartridges and two and three quarter inch cartridges up to that so um it's not being used it's not being fired you can tell it's not being fired the the grind the grind marks which would have come off the grinding machine when it was lapped to the to the to the bolt fa uh, to the breech faces are still intact I'll just put it together and then it's still very tight it's very difficult to get together uh, which a new gun should be um, we'll clip the clip the far end on like that and then we'll open it up Webley and Scott uh, were a Birmingham well still are a Birmingham a firm based in Birmingham um, they a lot of the provincial makers would order a gun called in the in the white which means it would be a gun that would be put together but not finished the barrels would not be blacked they would not be choked they would not be uh, engraved or case hardened and what say um goldens in huddersfield would order one it would be sent up by train them their apprentice would go on to huddersfield station pick it up fetch it back to the works in the center of town and then they would put their name on it they would engrave it they would you know do what the customer wanted alter the barrel length if that's that's you know that's what they wanted and basically that's what um webley and scott did they sought their own products 
um, they sold a lot of guns in South America and South Africa uh, as riot guns, as did Greener. Um, but Webley and Scott, a lot of these guns from provincial makers, especially in the in England. Uh, would have been Webley and Scott 700s or 710s. Uh, excellent guns. They don't they don't run out. They don't break. The pins are always really good. Um, and you know I've bought this really for Little Scout as a as a I don't know can I have it for his 21st or whatever. I, I don't intend to fire it. Not before then. Um, I'm going to give Little Scout the, the opportunity to either fire it or keep it or whatever. You know, it's it's heirloom quality. It's a beautiful thing. You know, the escutcheon's not, not been marked. It's not got any um, initials or anything on it. It's as fresh as it came out of the factory. Yeah, it's got a few scuffs on it where it's been put together and taken in bits. But, you know, if you were in the market for a second-hand... British shotgun, you you couldn't go further wrong than with a Webley and Scott. It wouldn't let you down. This is a, a box lock again. It's not a not a side lock as we discussed before. Um, very very uh, easy to look after. Very easy to maintain and keep clean. Nice light thing. That's 28 inch barrels where the Boswell was a 30 inch barrel. Um, be ideal for for pigeon shooting out of a hide, for your pheasant shooting. Ideal for grouse shooting. Um, the guy that bought this bought these new from um you know bought these new from the dealer but he bought two to shoot as a pair um of course they're not a matched pair but to shoot as a pair and the other one um he shot and shot well with and enjoyed it this one never got around to shooting it apparently uh and the la uh, the lad that bought the other one actually is a good pal of mine um he shoots with us um, and you know, he really likes his Webley and enjoys shooting it. Um, I've bought a nice case for it. I'm going to try and get a trade label. And what a, what what a gun dealer or gun maker would do is, if they supplied a gun case, they would put a trade label in there. Basically, a big sticky label that said this gun was bought from Webley and Scott, Birmingham, yada yada yada, gun quarter, etc. etc. Um, it would be nice if I could get a Webley case for it, um, but. Uh, I suppose if I keep looking at it, I might, you know, I might find one on my travels. But again, um, Webley shotguns, um, I, they are becoming an, an appreciating classic. Um, not that they've not always been, you know, well thought of. But like I said to you before, um, English guns are going through a bit of a renaissance at the moment. You know, people are wanting them. They're wanting them abroad. They're wanting, you know, people are wanting to buy them and. And, and put them away really and, and and sort of stick hold of them so they appreciate, appreciate in value um, I did give quite a chunk of money for that quite a few years ago but in four years I've had it three and a half, four years it's doubled in in you know in price and if I'd have had that money in bank I wouldn't have earned anything like it so I mean everything's for sale at the end of the day. I mean if if times do get tough and you know we start struggling, then I suppose I'd have to sell it and you know recoup some money. But I don't really want to. Um, but there again, it's it's one of them. It's 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 some uh, it's there for a rainy day. Um, some people don't know when it's chucking it down though, unfortunately. So, but anyway, um, British shotguns side by side. I hope that answers your questions. Um, I will talk about shotgun cartridges and I will talk about chokings because I, I, I you know I understand I mean I, I don't I didn't fully understand it for quite a while but um I will I will put the uh, I will I will dig the books out and I'll give you the proper definitions and then I'll I will I will uh, discuss with you how I interpret them um and then we'll we'll take it from there right guys um I'm going to go on to rim fires now which is another question that somebody asked me um and I hope that's been of some interest to you so thank you very much and I will uh, I will whip through another video for you thank you